good morning uh, so um, uh, today's lecture we are going to learn um, another important um, analytical uh, equation closed form analytical equation uh, to um, understand the physical phenomena of colliding particles instead of colliding rigid bodies right so uh, we have studied uh, in fundamentals of engineering mechanics that's particularly rigid body mechanics uh, with basic two ideologies one is particle mechanics another one is rigid body mechanics so today's lecture i'm going to give you a brief understanding of what are these two mechanics refer to as an overview and then continue uh, my lecture to explain you uh, with the continuation of our uh, course content of collision which is particularly non centroidal collision so for what we have uh, learned uh, in module 3 is central collision central impact that means uh, you have two colliding vehicles center of mass or center of gravity will lie along the line of impact of the uh, collision event whereas uh, today's class we are going to uh, learn about the collision of two vehicles where the centroids of the two vehicles center of gravity of the two vehicles will not lie along the line of impact in such cases how are we going to account to understand the physical phenomena of uh, this uh, collision is what uh, we are going to uh, learn from, from today's two classes morning class as well as from the afternoon class right so let me share my screen for the lecture hope you are able to uh, see the screen so the screen uh, gives you what we have done in the last class uh, during lecture number 13 we essentially learned what is kelvin's theorem for dissipated energy during collision right so that has been given by this expression which is written on the uh, screen and we have uh, continued to look at uh, basically to understand what is concept of relative motion uh, hence we are able to prove this uh, kelvin's theorem and then we extended our uh, understanding to derive the expression uh, for uh, energy dissipation during the collision that is delta d dash uh, is going to be uh, equal to delta e total crush energy multiplied by 1 minus e square where e is called coefficient of restitution right so this is what we were uh, uh, looking at in the last class essentially and this diagram gives you what is the variation of relative velocity as function of time during the event of crash and uh, there can be uh, uh, three different cases uh, as what uh, and for which you would have the variation of relative uh, velocity as function of time and there's some disturbance uh, as road vehicle sound right for and for that so this is what we have seen someone is prompting so any doubt please we have any doubt ah uh, please otherwise we will continue that uh, essentially what you see here is uh, in kelvin's theorem and uh, importantly we were able to express the two colliding vehicle masses m1 m2 by the equivalent mass by the equivalent mass that is me so given by m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 and uh, you would be able to get uh, uh, your uh, energy uh, straight away by uh, of me e square is what is delta e uh, into 1 minus e square that you can get right so this is what is uh, uh, we have seen in the last class and today's class in this lecture number 14 i'm going to explain you the second part of module 3 what is called non centroidal collision so as i said let's just to briefly understand uh, uh, fundamentals of rigid body mechanics once again uh, that's what we have studied as particle so this is lecture number 14 and today's date 28 07 2021 
let's understand what is this particle mechanics and rigid body mechanics so these are the two ideologies of engineering mechanics where the study of uh, system of forces acting on bodies which are uh, rigid in nature and the effect of uh, uh, forces on bodies uh, which are going to be resulting into a motion for uh, unconstrained or partially constrained bodies so this study is what is uh, brought under the um, field of uh, rigid body mechanics so particle mechanics is also a rigid body mechanics with an important assumption that we do not consider the geometry dimension of the rigid body so if i consider the vehicle dimension that's wheel base track and then cg height and the forces are going to act at different locations like in tire contact patch uh, wind resistance uh, the frontal projected area and you have your weight component or drag at the cg location or draw weight at the rear of your uh, vehicle if i consider it like that and then look at my system of forces that falls under the category of rigid body mechanics if i consider my vehicle passenger car as a point mass where i am interested only what is its travel along the highway um, so i only wanted to understand analyze its motion then it is very much simplified uh that i don't require to look at the dimension of the vehicle instead uh, the total weight of the vehicle at cg is a point mass i can consider and do my mechanics and that's what is called the particle mechanics so uh, how do you describe the particle mechanics in particle mechanics the system of forces forces are concurrent So you understand what do you mean by concurrent? If I consider the system of forces acting on vehicle at various locations, when I make a vehicle as a particle assumption, all forces would be transferred or acting at uh, only at CG. So that's what is concurrent. So every force acting on a body and their line of action is uh, at a common point intersection, then the system is called a concurrent system of force. so that is the main advantage of uh, making such assumption so this concurrent system of force resultant would result in what the effect on a body as translational effect translational effect or translational motion right uh, just a minute there is some noise i mute it and then again i will start our lecture yeah so the translation effect is uh, uh, the translation effect can be what it can be rectilinear motion or it can be curvy linear motion so uh, the fundamental governing equation would be only sigma f unbalanced uh, forces would be equal to mass times acceleration that's what can be expressed as uh, uh, d by uh, dt of d by uh, just one minute okay sorry for this uh, muting for a minute it is because there is a huge noise uh, some loud speaker uh, announcement and music is there on the road so i just muted pardon for that now let's continue with our lecture um, so the fundamental governing equation is only your newton's uh, uh, um, equation uh, in in particle mechanics so uh, you would 
be able to define that as d by dt of mv where this mv is what is called linear momentum linear momentum right that's what we have seen so with respect to collision uh, what would be happen uh, two vehicles are colliding and i have this particle ideology then the collision becomes central impact central impact problem so this is what we have studied in central impact we have looked at uh, two uh, uh, cases one is direct central impact and oblique central impact. So both the cases we were able to solve the problems or understand the physical phenomena by applying principle of impulse and momentum and uh, the definition of coefficient of restitution. So the definition of coefficient of restitution that comes from a crash event. So the crash event can be uh, looked at into two phases from start of the contact till the maximum deformation called the deformation period and from the maximum deformation till the separation of collided uh, vehicle period called the restitution period. So the entire crash event is in two phases of deformation phase and restitution phase we have looked at and that has helped us to define uh, essentially a coefficient called the coefficient of restitution which is defined as RDT, integral RDT, which is called restitution impulse divided by integral PDT, which is called deformation impulse. So this is what essentially we have looked at uh, so far uh, in central impact with the particle ideology of mechanics. So today's class, we are going to look at what non-central impact or eccentric impact it's called. So for that, uh, uh, you look at uh, uh, its counter uh, uh, statements. Like you have here system of forces are concurrent. Here the system of forces, forces are general. So what do you mean by general? That would be neither concurrent nor parallel parallel system of forces so in such cases what would happen the effect of system of force on bodies would make not only translation it can be a pure translation so when it can be a pure translation um, uh, the general force system uh, uh, instead of general force system, if we have a system of forces acting on rigid body or concurrent at its CG, then it can be some translation because that is a subset. When you say general force system, uh, uh, it is uh, not all the time rigid bodies are acted upon by general force system alone. A rigid body with this dimension, but the forces can act at its CG only. Also, there are physical systems. So, in such cases, that can have translation or there is an important effect called rotation. So anything that rotation uh, 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 motion that is accounted is because I cannot ignore the geometry of the physical uh, body, the vehicle geometry also to be accounted. Then only I can look at the rotation of wheels. Then only I can account the rotation of gears. Then only I can account the rotation of crankshaft, all to calculate uh, their dynamics and then hence it's um, uh, forces and energies and so on in the system. So the rotation motion would be because of uh, uh, elimination of particle assumption. And it can also have an effect called combined translation and rotation. So you can also have combined translation and rotation. That's called general motion, general plane motion or general motion. So again, this general motion can be simplified as general plane motion or spaced motion. So general plane motion means you look at bodies which are represented with reference to the plane by symmetry. 
So you look at uh, uh, tire wheel assembly. So a tire wheel assembly is symmetric uh, during its rotation uh, with reference to its wheel plane. So if I consider wheel plane is my reference plane, the motion of tire wheel assembly is general plane motion where that makes your vehicle to translate that the CG of your or the center of your wheel uh, uh, is translating as well as the wheel is rotating is a classical example of general plane motion. General plane motion. And you drive your ride your bicycle, the wheels on the road, the motion is what is general plane motion. A ladder sliding. Uh, so the contact of ground is sliding and the other end of the ladder is uh, sliding on a vertical wall. So it is an example of general plane motion where you see there is a curvilinear translation as well as rotation of your ladder. So such kind of motion is the effect can be witnessed the moment you eliminate particle mechanics ideology and get into real rigid body mechanics where the rotation is because of the force in its effect uh, or uh, its other uh, form called the moment. So your governing equation, not only sigma f is equal to ma, which is d by dt of its linear momentum, rate of change of linear momentum. Additionally, you would also have the moment, unbalanced moment would be equal to i times alpha, which can be defined as rate of change of angular momentum rate of change of angular momentum so these equations come into picture again this equation what i write is an elementary equation you see i is one value here but i is a matrix and so on in vehicle dynamics that we have seen right in uh, uh, the moment you say general pain motion it is it is a 2d motion it is 2d motion it's not 3d motion so when it is 2d motion you would have two fundamental governing equation to account translation uh, Newton's second law, to account rotational effect uh, Euler equation and then combination you would see they are used in general plane motion. So this is what uh, uh, as far as the governing equation is concerned. Then uh, a specific problem of our courses was crash event of our vehicle. So when you are not considering, uh, when you are neglecting uh, uh, when you are neglecting the dimension of the vehicle, we see that it's central impact. When you do not uh, uh, eliminate the dimension, you consider its whole dimension and forces acting at various locations in the uh, body. Uh, that means you will have many number of impulses that are acting on your vehicle externally uh, in different locations during collision. In that such cases, you see that uh, collision is called a non central impact or eccentric impact problems. So this also you would have the physical event of crash can be looked at by deformation period and restitution period. So you would have the definition of E here also holds as RDT by sigma p d t how all we are going to see in today's lecture so hope you understood the overview of our fundamental rigid body mechanics and how we uh, come down with that understanding to our context of lecture of non-central impact so let me just now go ahead with non-central impact so here also we are first going to understand how do we apply principle of impulse and momentum. So this is the application of principle of impulse and momentum is uh, very vital and always is the uh, only method to uh, quantify or to describe a collision event. That's what we have understood from central impact and that is valid point for non-central impact as well. So now what is that the application of impulse and momentum in central impact we did this what a simplified form only it was a linear impulse principle of linear impulse and momentum and the definition of restitution to account the uh, uh, crash event. <laughs> 
which relates the relative velocities uh, uh, before uh, collision and after collision of two colliding vehicles. But now this application of principle of impulse and momentum for uh, the plane motion of rigid body for the plane motion of rigid body is what we have to understand uh, on first hand for today's lecture. <laughs> so you know what is me what do you mean by plane motion? It is 2D motion where the simultaneous translation and rotation that takes place. So classical examples are the uh, one which I have just now told. Uh, rolling motion of wheel uh, uh, of your passenger car is a classical example of general plane motion, <laughs> right? Uh, flywheel uh, rotation is pure rotation uh, in a uh, crankshaft one end dismounted to store energy in order to reduce the fluctuation of speed uh, in your uh, IC engine or in the case of a punching press and so on. If you are able to recollect what you have studied in your dynamics of machinery. So that's pure rotation part and uh, general motion here refer to combination of translation and rotation, right? So if we have understood that, now let's look at uh, application of uh, uh, this by looking at this rigid body. So in mechanics textbook, uh, anytime if you look at, uh, it is customary or standard uh, the books represent that the rigid body by means of some arbitrary shape like this. So let me consider in the similar fashion. So I consider this is a rigid body now. So this rigid body is made of what? N number of particle elemental mass, delta M. So I have many delta M's located and constitute in a total mass of this rigid body. And the relative position of these small masses are not going to be changed under the action of the forces that is what is the definition of rigid body how do you define rigid body so when uh, rigid body is acted upon by system of forces like this there are n number of particles or the elemental mass constituting the total mass of the body and the relative position will not change under the action of force but that the body is called a rigid body so in this rigid body now i would have this elemental mass uh, would give my linear momentum when this uh, body is under motion with the velocity v. So then how do I define them? I can define them as uh, this elemental mass that would have uh, vi. So I just put i to write a generic way into delta m i. So this is i to mass. So if this is i to delta m, I get the linear momentum uh, due to the velocity of this body at time t1 given by vi into delta mi. So like that I have many uh, momentum. So this may be 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on until uh, i is equal to n. So n delta m's are there then del n times uh, delta uh, uh, vi uh, delta m. Uh, M I would be there, right? That's what uh, I refer to this. So this is its initial momentum during the observation at time t one, and this is acted upon by an external impulses. Look at the word external impulses. That's important. X Y. So this can be with many external impulses. So this diagram, what I draw, is identical because it's a rigid body that could not change. Though I draw, maybe the shape is a little bit uh, different, uh, assume that same shape. So this is acted upon by what? The n number of uh, external impulses. So it can be uh, just uh, represented like this. And these are all what? Uh, impulses. So you know impulses defined as F dt from T1 to T2. Say. So <clears throat> this is what does impulse 1 to T. If that is so, the sum of these two is equivalent to uh, the system momenta x, y, the same rigid body at there is some reorientation because of this, uh, because of velocities, the same orientation may not be there. So the reorientation may be considered here and that would have similarly 
so this velocity direction here, something like that. So maybe I would draw that here in this version. That is V I M uh, I delta M I two. So this is at one. So this is two I quote, and this is because at T two. So at T one time, whatever is the system linear momenta plus external impulse, sum of external impulse would be equivalent to at time T two. What is the system momenta? Is what is uh, called uh, looking at uh, a rigid body and applying principle of impulse and momentum principle, right? Any any uh, uh, doubt in this? So it is how do I call this by equation? It is sister momenta. It's plural, so number of that. So it's instead of momentum, momentum is one. Momenta is many sum. One plus system external external impulses one to two that would be equal to system momenta at two so this is what is principle of impulse and momentum on the rigid body that we apply so here you see this uh, uh, vi into delta mi when delta mi if i do uh, summation i can write that as a linear momentum like this. So what is here now? Linear momentum that is L. L letter is simply used for representing linear momentum. That is summation of the system i is equal to 1 to n system momentum. So V i delta m i. And it's not only that, also you have here resulting couple momenta. See, that's what is the difference between particle uh, mechanics and rigid body mechanics. In rigid body mechanics, if you have like that uh, uh, system momenta, that would be having linear momentum as well as an angular momentum. So this is its linear momentum and its angular momentum is always represented by H with reference to its centroid point and that would be equal to summation of I equals 1 to N it is moment of linear momentum. So I would say that is Ri dash into cross uh, this Vi to delta Mi. Delta Mi. So you would have now in the system not only linear momentum, that would be the case of particle uh, mechanics or central impact. In case of non central impact, you would have system momenta would be consisting of linear momentum as well as uh, couple momentum. What is this called? The couple momentum. What is this called? The linear momentum. Linear momentum. All right. So now uh, you know what is the difference between moment of a force and a couple moment, right? Uh, that's very important uh, concept called equivalent force couple system ideology, right? So what is that? I just to say that uh, you know it's fine. Otherwise, also let me just uh, uh, explain you that we have done in our vehicle dynamics course um, the lateral force is developed at CG location, right? So when you are uh, having that summation of lateral force on right and left side wheel on an axle, and that resultant when you are transferring to your roll center, what are you doing? You are just shifting that force and then it's canceled in the other way. So it is uh, shifting a force from one location to an another location parallelly would be brought as a force and an equivalent couple. So that's what uh, I just want to say. So what was that in your vehicle? Um, dynamics course uh, we have looked at uh, this is an axle and this axle uh, uh, represent as a rear axle in top view the vehicle turns on one side uh, you have seen that there is a rotation of axle and then uh, again rotation of um, uh, body so that's happening at what point it's the roll center point so this is the roll center point and uh, above which you also see the rotation of 
your uh, uh, vehicle body. That's what you have seen, right? So you had here the resultant force F Y F Y. So you, you, the rotation on the outer side um, uh, uh, when it turns to this. So when the vehicle goes on your right, uh, this is the inner side. So F Y I F Y not. So role of your vehicle body is about this. So this is your role center, and you have somewhere here your CG. We have seen this all. So what am I saying here is what is this couple moment is? This sum is what is FY, which is FY I plus FY naught, and this FY can be comfortably pushed to comfortably pushed to this point. I can take this as it is here and transfer it here, cancel it here like that. So this is the FY and the FY. So now what's happening here? This FY and this FY sum forms a couple. So this is a couple. And that makes your axle roll. And this FY is now unbalanced. And this FY again can be pushed here and there is a moment. That one contributes for the roll. The other one is centripetal acceleration. So I can again push this FY here and then transfer here. So this FY, and this FY constitute the roll. That's why the vehicle rolls outside. And this FY is what is equal to M A Y centripetal force. So this is what is simple free body diagram. Why did I draw this again to understand what is couple moment? So the couple moment is force into this distance. So this distance, what is height of the roll center uh, from ground to this into this force is what is that couple moment, correct? So what is this couple moment in this case? Uh, roll uh, uh, Fy, uh, it's not Fy, Fx because that is their axis. Fx uh, roll of your axle would be Fy into Rc. So it's a scalar equation if you consider simple product where RC is the perpendicular distance of RC from the ground. So this is what is your couple moment, right? So what is couple moment you have understood? So you look at a door latch. So if you have to open the door, you apply force tangentially at one end of the door and the door is rotating above the hinge. So you would see the reaction at the hinge and the road is the door is rotating because of the couple moment. So that's a couple moment, right? The resultant of couple moment is zero because that is formed by equal and opposite forces. So if you have a system where uh, um, system of forces only constitute or resolved into number of couples, then there is resultant zero, but still the effect of system force would be there on the rigid body and that would create pure rotation. There is no uh, translation. There is no reaction at the uh, um, uh, axis of rotation at the hinge, right? That's what is uh, couple system uh, of force or what is couple moment. So here in our case, uh, you see couple moment here is what is uh, moment of linear momentum. So I have linear momentum. I multiply that with this Ri. If this is a scalar equation, simple product. Uh, you, you can also refer by vectorially, uh, correct? Uh, please uh, 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 come along with me. Uh, if I have to specifically express vectorially, I can do it. That is for a special uh, 3D motion time. But for convenient today, uh, I'm not going to consider them as um, uh, no vectorial operation. Whenever it is, I will explain it. So if you see this RA here, is the perpendicular distance from the CG to where is the uh, linear momentum is acting. Like that if I consider, so moment of linear momentum would be a couple. Right, so you would understand this very well now from the following uh, diagram. From the following diagram. So what I uh, mean to say that uh, this system can be equivalent to like this. So we looked at now a system of rigid body. So this rigid body now acted uh, formed by many number of elemental mass. So at height mass we have seen vi delta mi uh, so this system now can be uh, can be equivalent to representing like this 
So what uh, I just wanted to explain it. So uh, uh, how so I have the CG location of this rigid body is somewhere here. So this is the number of linear momenta acting at the body responsible for number of forces as uh, we look at its variation as function of time. That is what is dmv by dt, right? These are all forces or linear momenta when you say <laughs> you would be able to represent this as an equivalent force coupled system at this point of CG as uh, this way. This would be equal to L that's equal to mv and uh, with the couple uh, moment that's equal to hg uh, which is equal to i bar what is i bar i bar is uh, centroidal mass moment of inertia centroidal mass moment of inertia so in this planar system of motion with reference to symmetry reference plane then uh, it is simply i bar is defined as m k square where k is radius of gyration so this is a known thing and the unit of this is kg meter square you studied all so this hg is i bar times omega so what is that i have my rigid body where there are uh, um, the entire mass of the rigid body is uh, composing many elemental masses if the body has a velocity v then an elemental masses can have a linear momenta like this can be represented on a rigid body by its total linear momentum and its uh, um, couple angular momentum couple uh, momentum and that is what is given like this so if you do not understand please ask me so now uh, why did i write this how this is equal to this you can see that now from here so this is missing element this is not there so this is equal to this i am writing so here this is somewhere located and this is my cg point so this can be brought here uh, with a couple that's what is uh, this diagram that's what is this diagram so you may wonder here what has happened to this uh, impulses acting on the rigid body so all external impulses are zero in this case so i consider if all external impulses are zero or cancel each other then uh, uh, this is equal to this so i can represent this so the moment you have a, a non centroidal uh, collision to understand first in hand you should understand this is the equivalent system of linear momenta and angular momenta at the cg location right so in this you see now uh, if uh, in this two omega is zero what do you mean by that uh, rotation is not there it is only linear momenta so the vehicle uh, will undergo only translation if omega is zero then it is only translation in the rigid body if v is zero then v is zero but omega is not uh, zero right i have to write that also so if omega is zero and v is not equal to zero is case one and v is zero and omega is not equal to zero then it is pure rotation rotation of the body if we have both v and omega your system of uh, linear momentum at any time t plus the impulse from time t1 to t2 some external will be equal to represented by its equivalent linear momenta and uh, couple momenta like this all right so this is what uh, uh, if you understood now let's go into looking at uh, non centroidal rotation sir, non centroidal the, rotation right sir, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, if please. omega is equal to zero then um, isn't that pure rotation isn't it the other way around yeah how omega is what omega is an angular velocity yes sir, is so the linear that... velocity and i say the case uh, angular velocity is zero where linear velocity is not zero that is a specific case of rigid body motion only translation so when it uh, happen only translation all the uh, forces 
or concurrent. Then only it's only translation. So if you have system force acting on a body, but uh, oh, no. there is no omega that is there, there is no angular velocity. That means the system of forces is concurrent and it result into translation can be rectilinear or curvilinear, right? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. And similarly, when V is zero, that means there is no translation. So it's partially constrained. You can imagine the disk is hinged at its center of that. So it can only have a pure rotation, a drum rotated because of pull of rope, which is around around it. So that's an example of a pure rotation. So these are two specific cases, right? Are you getting? Yes, yes. Yeah. So now let's look at what is non-centroidal rotation. So non-centroidal rotation is otherwise general pin, general pin motion only. So for that again, let us uh, take a generic uh, rigid body uh, in the similar fashion. And I have now uh, this is my uh, location of its G. Right at G, what is that I do have? I have I have my linear momenta M V, where M is the total mass of this rigid body, V is the velocity at uh, an observe at an instant what you look at, and that act at CG. And I have my system where the system is uh, also represented by uh, angular momenta. That would be I bar centroidal mass moment of inertia because about this point I look at it into omega. So if that is so, I can have my this rigid body when it is not constrained, this is the resultant at CG. When it is constrained to rotate about an axis point O, say this is point O where it is constrained and this would make this to rotate now, whereas an rotational effect. So when I have it like that, what would happen? So I would have here angular velocity omega is that like that so it is about fixed axis now so o is fixed axis of rotation but this axis is not centroid right i have my resultant linear momentum and resultant angular momentum at cg location and these two are present the motion of this would essentially uh, when it is constrained about the point which is non-centroid of this point. So that point O. So this motion is what is called non-centroidal rotation. So if I have this non-centroidal rotation, now how do I go about doing it? So this entire thing is rotating is because of uh, MV, its moment about this point. So moment of linear momentum about this point O and the couple momentum. So couple momentum is free vector. So it can be represented anywhere on the Rigid body. Though I have just represented it is at G, I can slide this, take it anywhere on this because it is formed by two parallel and opposite linear momenta. That's what is that uh, I was uh, essentially trying to explain you in my previous slide. So you can uh, now uh, do this in this way. So taking moment at point O, how do I write this equation? I would write my uh, any time when you are taking moment uh, in a system about a point, you should look at for any couples are present. First, you should write them. So uh, uh, you may you may have this direction in the other way for convenient now because I just want to have summation here, right? So just to correct this. Let us take a rigid body as it is like this. And this is CG location. And this CG location, I have this uh, momenta I bar omega. And I have my uh, linear momenta in this direction like this. So that I wanted summation here. And the diagram what I have drawn would be opposite. That's fine. Uh, according to the case to case you can do. Here it is M into V. So now when I take moment about point O, I would have what I bar omega plus mv mv into this perpendicular distance here is what is r so i put here r bar this centroid uh, location from point o so it is not vector uh, it's uh, here the bar refer to uh, your centroid location i bar is referred to i is uh, actually a matrix in a three dimension we have looked at earlier 
uh, in vehicle dynamics. But in planar motion, that I uh, confine to a, a, a constant value uh, by unit kg meter square, right? It's only one about this uh, IG, you are saying it. So this I bar is, uh, or I want to say uh, instead of I bar, I can put I subscript G into omega. It's our convenient only. So the bar refer here is its centroid location with refer to the reference point to O, which is fixed axis of rotation. So if that is so, I get now the effect in this body because of this system of linear and angular moment is its rotation with respect to O. So uh, what is that is because of uh, I bar omega plus MV times into this R bar. And uh, that would be uh, written as now. I can rewrite this as uh, what is my I bar? It is M K square. M K square uh, plus uh, this V can be written. V is what linear velocity here. So here, this V here is its linear velocity, right? V in this direction is a linear velocity. How can I write this V? What is the relationship? Since it is constant to rotate about with O, angular velocity omega, so R omega, R bar omega is what is V. So if I substitute that here, that is going to be uh, M R bar M R bar squared into omega. M R bar square into omega. So now what is M R bar square? Uh, M, uh, sorry, this is M K G square. M K G square or I, I would rewrite this as, uh, this is what is all total momentum at point O. Uh, total moment at point O. A couple moment at point O is given by this. So I bar uh, is what is mkg square. So I will rewrite this as I bar omega plus m r bar square into omega. So if I take this omega out, so I bar plus m r bar square into omega. So what is this I bar plus m r bar square is I naught into omega. And uh, how do you get this I naught is I naught is I G centroid mass moment of inertia plus mass times the distance between the centroid and the point of uh, rotation that is M R square. So this is your parallel axis theorem from whose parallel axis theorem. So if we have any rigid body rotating, not at CG or any other point, you can represent that as a non centered rotation by simply the mass moment of inertia of the rigid body about point O, I should find out. That can be easily found out. If I know for a rigid body about its CG, add along with that mass times this parallel distance square. So I get I naught. It's simply I naught times omega is what is it? Yeah. So this has got an advantage to write our principle of uh, uh, impulse and momentum equation comfortably. Right, so if you understood that, uh, uh, now how do I write my principle of impulse and momentum for the non centroid rotation? I can write this way. I can write in this way. So at time t, at time t1 and crash event, crash event, at time t2, that is acceleration, right? So how do I write uh, system momenta? System momenta for a non centroidal rotation is what? Is I naught omega one. One subscript referred to the t1 observation plus total system angular impulse. So that is integral m naught dt. So you look at here, instead of force fdt, it's become angular impulse that is what the impulsive force here it is angular impulse uh, that's force in this is angular uh, momentum impulse momentum impulse so unit will be what newton meter into second between t1 to t2 that's going to be i naught omega 2 so if we are describing a general plane motion as its non centroidal rotation so what i mean by that uh, you look at a wheel rotation 
look at a wheel rotation. So if this wheel is a rigid wheel in a locomotive we look at. Uh, I have this contact point here, which is called an ICR point, instantaneous center of rotation, which is not centroid. Centroid is here. So I can describe this by means of uh, uh, MV as well as I bar or I bar omega, or I can represent this entire rotation, entire rotation simply at point uh, ICR, say point O, only by I naught omega. That's all. So because of this, if this is uh, rotating with an angular velocity and the velocity of uh, um, rigid body, every point is different. That's what is again and another important understanding of rigid body mechanics. In particle mechanics, we have only one velocity. In rigid body mechanics, any location you take in a rigid body, its linear velocities are different with respect to instantaneous center of rotation. So with respect to this, its linear velocity at CG is R times omega. Whereas if I go to this point, upper point is 2 R times omega. If I come here, then I should take its direction velocities here and then I would have this velocity would be this distance square, oh, sorry, this distance into omega. So you see every point is different. So what is the velocity at ICR? That's velocity zero point. So that's what is uh, here. So like this, you have understood your kinematics of general plane motion already in mechanics. I'm just uh, uh, telling you back again to recollect it. So I can represent it like this. So this is what is uh, your general plane motion represented as non-centroidal rotation. So this is non-centroidal rotation of the plane now. So is that clear? If that is so, I can best understand my angular impulse and momentum equation mm -hmm. capital one. So if I have a rigid body vehicle which are colliding, which is uh, undergoing non-centroidal uh, impact, eccentric impact, instead of applying mv1 plus integral uh, t1 to t2 fdt is equal to mv2, I would apply uh, i naught omega 1 plus total angular impulse equal at time to what is angular momenta, system angular momenta with respect to uh, fixed axis of rotation or non-centroidal axis of rotation. So in this case, it is fixed axis, where in this case, this ICR is on the ground and this translating. So this is only the concept or fundamentals that you should understand. Another interesting aspect here is in general, if you look at there can be system, uh, physical system with application of these forces can make consideration of angular momentum always possible, whereas uh, consideration of linear momentum not necessarily to be conserved. So linear momentum not necessarily to be conserved, whereas angular momentum can be conserved in the uh, physical system. There are examples. So when that it can only angular momentum can be conserved where linear momentum cannot be conserved. Those cases are when all action of external forces passes through the point of application uh, at the axis of rotation, then uh, uh, it is only entire conservation of angular uh, momentum possible. So at that time, this impulse, this goes zero and you would have system angular momentum at point O, T1 will be angular momentum conserved at T2, right? At that time, this external uh, impulses, um, momentum, um, not momentum, externally coupled moment to all become zero. So any doubts so far what we discussed? If you do not have any doubts, I'll stop at this point of time. And then we will uh, do in the afternoon, uh, continue from here, how can you look at uh, uh, impact problem? How can you apply this uh, equation? And uh, how did we do for direct or oblique central impact? Uh, if we are knowing beforehand the velocities, after collision, what are the velocities? That's what we are interested in to calculate uh, what is the energy absorbed in during the collision. So in such cases, we applied <coughs> in central impact, uh, linear consideration of momentum principle along the line of impact and <coughs> definition of uh, coefficient of restitution. Those are the two equations used 
and now in uh, our uh, non centric uh, uh, eccentric non centroidal impact non central impact problem how are we going to find out uh, the velocities uh, it will be a linear and uh, angular velocity combination like you see here v and omega how are you going to find out after the collision is what we will do in the afternoon lecture and then maybe solving one or one problem sample problem to confirm uh, our understanding then we will get back again looking at uh, uh, our uh, uh, textbook matthew whom uh, vehicle crash routineness chapter number 7 you would comfortably follow what all there in the textbook right so with that note let me stop uh, this lecture if you have any doubts i'm happy to answer otherwise i'll stop morning lecture any doubt anybody okay i'll stop lecture